the most inspiring to me is, and we haven't got to touch on it yet, but is truly the the biologics and the cellular options. Like the the stem cell space is so life changing for people, so life changing. I, I can't even like. Let's talk about it for a little bit, because because again. I think this is another area where we've had people come on the show that have had great experiences. And then we've had people like Dr. Josh Axe come on and had like he had a rough time and then he actually finished it. He ended up turning it around with stem cells again. But if if people even start to think about something, like where do they even begin to research and find resources that point them in the right direction? It's really tough because here no stem cell treatments are FDA approved. Right. Mm -hmm. And but that doesn't mean they're good or bad. What it means is. Nobody's paid $350 million to run it through the FDA and get a placebo-controlled trial on a biologic that you can't patent. You can't patent human nature. You cannot patent biology. And so the reason that these products aren't all like in an FDA approval process, the truth is as soon as one has an indication, anyone else could just go and extrapolate the same exact cells because you're taking a healthy birth, healthy mother, pre-planned C-section, uh, and, and I want to give, I want to explain that too. I'm not telling people to go get a C-section. I went on a, a, another podcast and people are like, this guy is telling people to, I'm not, te I'm telling you what the government says. This is not, I'm just telling you the regulations, yep. the regulations required to be a pre-planned C-section. They take the discarded afterbirth, which is the placenta and the umbilical cord. And within those are the goodies of life. Like when a woman's pregnant, your heart grows by 30% in the third trimester. Your risk of cancer, diabetes, all the chronic diseases we've talked about are right now at an all-time low. You're, as much as you are keeping the baby alive, the baby is keeping you alive. Oh, yeah. Those cellular goodies, cytokines, exosomes, extracellular vesicles, scaffolding, all of these like little building blocks are flowing through your body, keeping your body healthy. That's why women have the pregnancy glow. That's why people talk about how good their skin Do I looks. Have it? You have it. Thanks. <laughs> your skin looks great. You know, you're gonna have to stay pregnant. We're just gonna keep it. <laughs> <laughs> but so all of those, as we age, there's a precipitous decline in all of these cellular goodies. And so if you fall as a little kid and you scrape your knee, you heal really fast. If you fall as an 80-year-old woman, you may have a scab for three months. You may bruise. You may never heal. It, it takes forever. So if we take those goodies that nature, God, whatever you want to call it, gives us, and we extrapolate out from the umbilical cord and the placenta, all of these building blocks of life, all we're doing is giving you those building blocks for a six to eight week time period. But that's if it's done like correct, right? If it's what if it's done wrong? So what they were worried about before and this is where it gets super confusing. This is during the Bush administration. They were thinking that they were going to be aborting fetuses and taking aborted babies and extrapolating out stem cells. And so they that's why it's got to be the pre-planned C-section stuff. And then they were saying, uh, you know, we don't want you cloning humans. They were worried that they were going to be cloning humans in a Petri dish and that they were going to enhance the cells that way and then manipulate the cells to create super soldiers and superhumans. So I understand all the reservations 20 years ago. The truth of the matter is, and then the, the last caveat is they were worried that these cells would go into the body and become something, right? Oh my God, if you put billions of these MSCs, what if they go in the body and become a cancer cell? They do not become anything. That's what we know now, 20 years later. And so scientists, doctors are still struggling because they're, they're candidly like behind the people who know what's going on are the, are the scientists at the bench. The PhDs that are working in the lab, that are testing these things every day. Dr. Kaplan is who identified MSCs and discovered them. And he has since released an open statement to the scientific community about three years ago, saying I should have never called them stem cells. I should have called them signaling cells. And so I wanna tell you that because here's why that's important. We put those cells in your body. Think of it like a construction site. For you to build a building, you need the brick, the mortar, the wood, all the raw elements to build the building. But you also need the blueprint and the plan to build the building. So now as we age, we lose those ingredients. That's all peptides are. Peptides are short chain amino acids and signaling cells. MSCs, stem cells, are nothing more than birth derived tissues that are signaling cells. So we're gonna put billions of signaling cells in your body 
that find their way to a site of inflammation that then signal to your body, like me, 44 year old cells, to come to the site of injury. When my cells show up, 44 years old, tired, weary, all those things, it transfers its mitochondria into my old cells, making my cells young again for a period of time. And then those baby cells are gone. Within a few days, they're out of your system. But your cells are essentially supercharged with fresh, healthy mitochondria, battery packs. In addition to that, you're getting a plethora of all of the goodies that we've lost as we've aged. You're getting cytokines, exosomes, extracellular vesicles, scaffolding, all the stuff that's at a sky high rate when you're a little kid, you're getting it back. So those for signal a six cells, to eight like week period. if you hurt your knee as a 44 year old man and you potentially use some of these therapies and then it, it's able to, to tell those cells to signal to heal your knee the way you would when you were younger. You got it. And it's giving you all the goodies to allow that to healing. stay strong. And that's where peptides are a great additive like BPC-157, some of these short, short chain amino acids that can help with tendon strength, joint health, uh, all of it. And so some of the most, you're not allowed to make claims. So here's, here's when they say you can't get stem cells in the United States, what they're saying is you cannot clone, you cannot manipulate. It has to be a minimally manipulated tissue. You cannot advertise or make claims which is crazy. So you're really limited in what you can say. So most people don't even know these things exist mm -hmm. because the FDA has made it so hard. So people think they've got to go to Panama or somewhere else to get this. You, you do if you want them to clone and manipulate and expand the cells in a Petri dish, but there's really no need to do that because what nature gave us works so great. Like they, it really does. Like the, it, they're so efficacious and effective at like certain types of injuries like knees, shoulders, joints, elbows. I mean, we we helped Aaron Rodgers with his Achilles. Yeah, son, he talked about that. about that and he even included us in the documentary, which was super cool of him. But if it wasn't for Aaron Rodgers and Joe Rogan, I don't think anyone would even know that anything about stem cells in this country. I really don't. Well, I think the conversation's opening up and starting to happen more. And again, this is like why I love these mediums so much and why we do it is because you are not going to be delivered this information in a quick soundbite on a mainstream media platform that's not riling people up and angering them and making them scared. Like, yeah. it, it, it just, it's not, it, it just doesn't sell. So like, you know, the, the, with the rise of these platforms and conversations with people like yourself, I think people are going to start looking at this. And that's why I'm so excited about what you guys are working on because I think for the first time, we, we were going down a path for a long time where a, I believe a lot of the conversation that we've had today would have been prohibited. Like they, they would have just, a lot oh, of the sure. shop would have been fully shut down, even with peptides, right? There was like getting to a place where pharmaceutical co companies wanted to control a lot of that and shut a lot of that down. Um, and I think now there's an opportunity for a lot of this to open back a up. A lot of what's happened with the cellular space, the biologic space is again, it's big pharma pressuring the FDA, forcing it out of the marketplace, trying to make it hard for patients to get accessibility because it is an amazing treatment option for orthopedic related injuries. You know, it's not going to regrow a tendon. It's not a miracle. I tell people, this is not a miracle. It's not magic. It's medicine, right? Fuck, but, I thought it was going to make me like 6'2". Yeah, oh. it's like within reason.